here's some cool new stuff to CSS. I put it all into a little demo because I was curious about how it all works. So we've got animating CSS grid, we've got the has selector, and we've got container queries all in one to make this kind of nifty UI. I was going to make this a short, but this is pretty cool. So I thought I just, instead of racing through it, I'll show you how it all works. So first of all, I have this grid right here. And I've defined the columns here as each as one FR. And the reason I've done that is so that I can then update the columns. Now, if you put a transition on your grid, in this case, I'm just saying all, but you could simply say uh, transition grid template columns, grid template row, and give it a number of seconds that you want it to animate on. And then when the, the columns and rows will grow or shrink, then the browser will now animate them kind of nicely like this. I like that. It's pretty nifty. The reason why I stuck them in variables is because I wanted to be able to update them based on where you are. So if you're in top right hand corner, you need to grow the first row and the last column. So what I've done is I've used some nth child selectors here, and this is a little bit nifty. I certainly could just put uh, classes on each of these as well if they're not changing. Uh, but what I've done here, as I said, when the grid has a child that is currently being hovered, then change that column to 2FR, meaning it will grow. So uh, that's really cool because you can now target a parent element based on if its child is doing something. So when a child is being hovered, don't apply these styles to the child, apply them to the actual parent, the grid itself. And that's cool because I can now overwrite that variable here and that will take into account the grid template row and grid template column. So this is just a, uh, a row selector, which we have here. Basically what this says is get me everything in the first row, the second row and the third row. Uh, and then the same, the first column and second column, third column, or the other way around. I, I mixed that up. Next thing we have here is container queries. I've got this item here and I have noted it as a container or marked it as a container. I've called it an item and I'm basing it on its size. Then you can go inside the container query and size things based on CQ values, container query values, meaning that uh, this CQ min will give me the minimum of the height or width of the container. Uh, and 15 is like 15%. So watch, if I were to, to make that like two, it would be much smaller. And 15, it would be much bigger. And what, what that does is that no matter the size of the container query, the value is just going to scale up and up and up. Like watch, if I make this bigger, 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 or smaller, 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 the text is always scaling up and down, not based on the viewport. I know that I'm resizing the browser here, but based on literally the container and watch like when I, when I go over top of this one, these values right here, like flying it, that, that container is getting smaller because it's being squeezed out. So we have to adjust the text for that and simply just popping a container query value on that font size will do it all for you. That's pretty nifty. Uh, there also was a, what did I use here? Here we go. Uh, I wanted to make the mix blend mode luminosity uh, of all of the, when I hover over any item, I want all of the other ones to have this luminosity mix blend mode. Uh, and what that does is uh, basically says, when you're hovering over one element, give me all of the siblings. Uh, give me the ones before it and the ones after it, but not the actually one that you're hovering. So here we say is when the grid has an item that is being hovered, then go and grab the items that are inside of it, but not the item that is currently being hovered. Unreal. Being able to mix these has and nots in CSS is super, super handy. Uh, what other kind of fun stuff do we have here? Not real much, just some background images. Uh, letter spacing is also based on the container query. You can use that CQW for quite a bit of things. Not everything. I tried to like use it in like a rotate value. That doesn't work. Uh, some kind of other cool stuff, the mixed blend mode stuff here. That's how I'm getting this kind of cool uh, overlay. I have a, if I take that off, you see it's just an ugly gradient, right? But when you put it back on, ooh, all of a sudden things start looking a little bit more fancy. So pretty, pretty nifty. This is maybe not something you would use in your everyday. I did put a uh, tab focus on it so that when you do tab through them, they still work. But uh, 
it's just a little bit of an example, just an exploration into several new CSS stuff in context of maybe when you might use it. Peace.